We cannot ask a fish, you know, are you saving energy or not? What we can do is we can develop a robot that swims like a real fish. It really behaves like a real fish. And we can measure precisely how much energy it's using. The collective behaviour of animals has long interested and mystified scientists. But recent developments in both AI and robotics have shed new light on the subject, allowing for a fresh look at swarm intelligence. One of the amazing things being a scientist in our time right now is that there's this explosion of new technologies that we can use to understand how the world works. This is Professor Ian Cousin. He heads up the Department of Collective Behaviour at the University of Constance. They use advanced technology to investigate patterns that are formed in nature. Because we're interested in principles of collective behaviour, we actually study an extremely broad range of organisms. So we literally study the simplest animal on the planet, it's called Placozoa. We study fish schools, bird flocks, all the way up to human crowds, because we ourselves, of course, live in a collective. And so across these different scales of biological organisation, we can use the same types of technologies, the same sort of tracking and imaging tools to really sort of understand how collectors operate. Most recently, Professor Cousin's team has been investigating why fish school. If you're already in a school, if, for example, you know, the threat of predation forces you to move together, then there may be other benefits, such as exploiting the hydrodynamics, the, the way that the, the water flows around other individuals. Just as dolphins swim alongside boats or cycling teams form a peloton, it's possible that fish benefit energetically from schooling. As a fish swims, it swirls the water behind it in what are called vortices, and then there's the potential for an individual following this fish to exploit the energy from those vortices to save energy as it moves. Testing this notion has proved tricky, so the team has created a robot to help. We cannot sort of ask a fish, you know, are you saving energy or not? And what we can do, however, is we can develop a, what's called a biometric robot, a robot that swims like a real fish. It really behaves like a real fish. And the great thing about the robot is we can measure precisely how much energy it's using. So by building multiple robots, we can create a school where we can measure the properties that in the real world are very hard to do so. The team experimented by putting pairs of robotic fish together, varying their swimming style and recording the data, which revealed something wholly unexpected. We know that when fish swim, they're very dynamic. They're in all sorts of different positions with respect to each other. Previously, it was thought they have to be in a very fixed position if they're going to get hydrodynamic benefits. And what we showed was you know, if the fish are, are side by side, then synchronizing is the best thing to do. But as a fish falls further back, then actually anti-synchronizing is the best thing to do. And in between, there's an intermediate. And so just by uh, adjusting the way the follower beats its tail with respect to a leader as a function of, of you know, the distance from that leader could allow the fish, irrespective of where it is, to always be able to save energy. The scientists were then able to observe this underlying rule in the behaviour of real fish. It was wonderful because the real fish were following this rule extremely nicely. We had this new way that it should work and indeed nature has found that solution. How have you managed to compare the robotic data with data from observations? Have you had to use more technology in order to correlate everything? We needed to use uh, computer vision, a, a computer to sort of track the motion of the fish and also to get the body posture. How are they beating their tails? And so this gave us the information we needed to test our ideas with the real animals. Professor Cousin's team are using deep learning, which utilises artificial neural networks to solve complex problems. A relatively new technology of the last five years or so, I mean, this is how you know, our phones know how to recognise our voices and, and so on. And we use this to actually track the animals and, and understand how they're behaving. And it's really revolutionised the study of, of animal behaviour. 
AI and robotics are not the only technologies that the team uses. A 3 by 3 meter digital aquarium also allows researchers to examine the way fish respond to visual input. Using our multi-point projection system, we can project videos onto the bottom of the tank to influence the behavior of large schools of fish and ask how they can process information. Here, for example, we've induced the swarm to spin. And by reversing the direction of rotation of the dots, we can induce the directional change in the group. As well as creating the world's most high-tech fish disco, Professor Cousins researchers have been pushing the boundaries on interactive holograms. One technology we've invented is immersive holographic virtual reality. You know, so I had this dream that, you know, what if we could create photorealistic holographic animals so the animals are interacting with holograms in real time? How this works is that basically they're in two different bowls, they're in two different environments, but they're in the same virtual environment. So in order to create an illusion of a 3D object, of a, an object that's popping out of the screen and it appears to be in the same body of water as the real fish, the projection needs to change in real time according to the position, according to the perspective of that one individual. Basically, Professor Cousin and his team are developing technology that takes the scientists out of the equation so the group behaviour of the animals can be monitored without concern for how it might be affected by an observing scientist. If I'm influencing you and you're influencing me, it's kind of hard to work at who's sort of really you know, in control, who's influencing who more. If there's a third person, am I influencing you via that third person? Or am I, you know, it, it's, it becomes very difficult. The technology is absolutely amazing, but living in the commercial world, the big question is why? People seem to think that, you know, there needs to be a reason, a, a direct benefit to humanity for research. But in actual fact, if you look at some of the major innovations in, in, in science, you know, for example, the structure of hemoglobin, that was studied because it was interesting, not because someone thought there was a direct benefit. The structure of DNA, for example, was studied because it was known to be important for biological life on the planet. And so one of the very important things about science is to give people freedom to explore and to study very broadly how the world works, rather than focus in on it's got to relate to us now. I've always been driven by a fascination of nature rather than direct application. And both are important, but they can work in synergy. Yeah, so, so our work has had unanticipated benefits both in terms of, say, robotics, but also in terms of algorithms in computers that can then search for data. And in actual fact, having these algorithms function as swarms. But that wasn't the reason we found those algorithms. We found them because nature had found this amazing solution to a, a, a challenging problem. And then we could utilize that. And Professor Cousins sees very specific applications for his school of robot fish. Our work is able to very seamlessly translate to collective robotics, how we can create swarms of robots that can use the sort of collective intelligence of animal groups to help us understand the world, to help us explore dangerous places and to get information about, for example, how humans are changing the climate and the oceans. And so there's lots of benefits for this, but I think the most important thing is just that it's interesting. So much science in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.